Hello, I'm Stefan Gerber, project leader for Lexty, and today we're going to be looking at another operating system and running it inside of Lexty virtual machines. So in the past, we've been running a lot of different Linux distributions. Um, there are most of the examples we tend to use Ubuntu for, and also showed Windows 10 and Windows 11 running inside of Lexty. One thing we've we've received quite a few requests for has been running BSD inside of uh, Lexd virtual machines. It's not as trivial as Windows or Linux, uh, mostly because of lack of drivers and some compatibility issues here and there. Uh, but it is possible, and today we're going to be looking at uh, running Ghost BSD, which is effectively a free BSD based distribution for, for lack of better words, I guess, um, which seems to be using a uh, GNOME Mate or something like that as a desktop environment. So it, it looks a lot like a standard Linux desktop distro, but is in fact uh, FreeBSD based. And that's that should be a pretty good example for running BSD inside of Lexd, and you can then use most of the same tricks to run uh, BSD. Well, other variants of FreeBSD or potentially also um, OpenBSD and some of the others. So the first thing you need to do is download an ISO image. So you can do that on their website, go to download, then direct download and just pick your local mirror. Once that's done, then it needs to go to a terminal. So in this case, I'm sharing a bit more of my screen because we're gonna be doing, dealing with virtual machines and so need to be able to show the VM graphical output and everything. So the first thing to do here is to actually create an empty virtual machine. Uh, I've got the command in my history here. I'm going to go through what it means. So it's doing Lexi init, which unlike Lexi launch, uh, will not actually start the instance immediately. Then we pass dash dash empty, which means we don't want to create from an existing image. Just give me an empty disk effectively name, um, in this case, called going to be called ghost PSD, dash dash VM, because we want a virtual machine. And then instead of using uh, Lexi config set after the fact, I'm just passing the, most of the configuration already through the command line. So I'm passing four CPUs, four gigs of RAM, and I'm turning off secure boot. I need to turn off secure boot because of uh, those EFI images not being signed effectively. Only a few Linux distros are signed and it looks like the BSD um, based distros and stuff are not. The other thing uh, I need to do here is that migration.stateful equals true. That's the odd one. And that's the one you're gonna need to run BSD uh, on top of LexD. What it normally is used for is it's used for live migration and stateful snapshot and stateful stop of virtual machines. What it does behind the scenes is restrict some of the CPU flags exposed to the guest, as well as turn off a number of devices that are not compatible with live migration. We don't actually want to live migrate this thing, but it turns out that the same devices and CPU flags that are causing uh, FreeBSD and OpenBSD to kernel panic on startup on, when running on top of LexD are turned off with this flag. So you effectively turn it on just so that BSD doesn't crash. Once that's done, uh, we've got a VM with nothing in it. The next thing that I need to do is do an override of the root device. So in this case, Lexi config device override, ghostbsd, which is the name of the VM, root, which is the name of the device. And we're gonna set the disk size to 20 gigs. And because we've got that migration that's stateful set here, we need to set uh, some amount of disk space aside for live migration and for stateful snapshot. Even though we're not going to use that, uh, it needs to be set. So we need to set size.state to a value that's um, equal or higher than the amount of memory the VM has. So in this case, we just match it at four gigs. All right. And once that's done, a few seconds, there we go. Uh, we need to also add the ISO image we downloaded. So for that, I'm gonna do Lexi config device add. Again, the name of the VM goes BSD. Name of the disk, I'm just calling it install in this case. Uh, set that it's a disk. Source path is the ISO image I downloaded. And then the boot priority, I'm setting that to 10. It just means that the VM will boot from the ISO instead of booting from its local disk effectively. So put all that, and now it's time to start it. So I can do start, go to BSD. 
Uh, if you just start it, you're not going to see anything. You need to run LXC console afterwards to see what's going on. Alternatively, you can just ask start to give you a console immediately. And here we go. So I can see the VM firmware starting up here and then the ghost BSD bootloader. So I'm just going to do enter for the default, um, default option. And then it looks like that particular BSD flavor is copying the entirety of the installed image into memory to make things go faster. So that's what it's doing now. It's just going to take a few seconds to, to copy itself into memory. That means you probably need at least four gigs of RAM if you want things to work. Um, then you get presented with a menu to choose what kind of display driver you need to use, uh, you, well, you want to use to run the desktop environment. The only one that works right now, because they don't seem to have a Vertio GPU driver, uh, is the SCFB, which is effectively using the kernel frame buffer uh, to render the desktop. It's fast enough on a decent machine, but don't expect any kind of acceleration whatsoever. So you select that, hit enter, and then you get presented with a desktop environment. Uh, it seems to be a perfectly functional live session, so you can actually like go and... Oops, what's my, what's my mouse now? There. Uh, just some issue with the mouse. It was working fine earlier. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> a bit of a weird bit of weirdness going on here with the mouse this time. I'm not sure why. Um, anyway, it was working fine earlier, so it might just be some issue with the mouse driver. So um, it's a functional system, you can go poke around on the file system and everything. Uh, but right now we mostly care about installing it. So you do install ghost PSD and we're just going to use the, <laughs> the keyboard uh, to avoid my mouse literally jumping everywhere right now. Um, somehow it's stuck to the right side of the screen. Um, it was working fine earlier. So I'm pretty sure after the install will be done, it should behave. So let's just do English. Um, Keyboard, I believe, was fine. Can I buy default? Ah, oh, crap, it's selecting it again. Uh, okay. Is there like a generic, just the most generic keyboard that'd be convenient? Yeah, there we go. Ah, I saw something that looked generic enough. Uh, fine. So let's do generic, uh, generic 104. Next. Um, choose the city, so America, and then let's do Toronto. Okay. And full disk, then select the disk. Uh, let's use the default swap amount and continue. For the bootloader, let's use the default UEFI. You only want to really use refined or something or not if you want to do um, dual boot or multi-boot or multi environments, which is not the case here. So the default bootloader will do just fine. Pick a password, then create um, a user. Oops. Uh, host name, we'll just call it the same as the VM name. I didn't pick a password. And pick your shell of choice, which for me would be bash, and then install. And here we can see it just partitioning things, then it's going to copy the actual system across. And after that, we should be good to go. Yeah, there we go. It's creating all of the... So it's using ZFS, um, which is pretty good for anyone uh, that's been using that with Legacy. It's kind of funny because it's going to be running ZFS inside the VM on top of ZFS on my host system, but that's all fine. Uh, so right now we're seeing it's it's copying and uh, running checksums on everything that's being copied. Just make sure everything is good. And I don't know, after maybe a minute or so, it should be installed and can reboot into it and hopefully it will work just fine. Um, what else can I say about uh, running BSDs? Uh, I mean, it is, for anyone who's not particularly familiar, uh, BSD is a completely different kernel. It does behave a lot like what you might be used to with Linux, mostly because of the user space tends to be the exact same as it's run on Linux, but the kernel is completely different which means completely different device drivers and also some other uh, different OS behaviors. So I'm not sure how good it is uh, these days on bare metal. I would not expect that to work super great on the most recent hardware. Um, but it's quite, BSD is, well, FreeBSD especially, is quite 
popular uh, with things like running NASes or routers or those kind of um, devices that tend to run on more standard, often a bit older uh, generation hardware, and that's a bit more single purpose. Um, but as we can see here, they also have uh, full-on desktop environments that you can play with. And here we go, we're already installed. Uh, so just to restart. And now I just hope that when this thing comes back up, my mouse will actually work this time around, because it definitely did last time. Okay, so the VM is restarting, uh, which means the graphical session exited. That's normal because LXD completely respawns the emulator on restart. So to reattach, you do LXD console, uh, name of the VM, so ghost BSD, and then type VGA. And that will reattach us there. Um, we actually do have a small, small problem here, which is if we're booting straight back into the installation uh, disk, which is definitely not what we want. So we're gonna want to stop it and then remove the install drive. The reason why it's doing that is because of that boot priority uh, that was said earlier. It's uh, so high priority that it kind of takes over everything. Um, so just remove the install drive after stopping the VM and then start it back up. And then you can do the console again. And this time it should actually boot from the local disk. Here we go. Uh, you can hit enter if you want it to go a bit faster and it should just boot into a working desktop environment. So, okay, here we go. Uh, now let's see if that mouse behaves this time around. That'd be cool. Uh, I swear this was working on here. Like, it definitely works for some stuff, but... Okay. I wonder if it's just like a window placement thing that's causing issues. Okay. Um, strat. I am really unsure what's going on. It might also be, uh, that might actually just be because of the, because of OBS running with the screen capture and all that stuff actually causing some amount of difficulty here. Um, I don't think there's any preference for the mouse or anything I can use. Nope. Okay, well, let's see if I can navigate things around. So just, I just want to show that things generally work. So if we do like a web browser, just showing that the networking is working properly. Uh, so we can do say the next container.org and that's loading up just fine. Similarly, uh, you can go in there and do system tools and get a terminal. And I don't know if they put any shortcuts to maximize this stuff, but anyway. Um, so the main thing is if you run the message, you're gonna see that this is not your normal Linux kernel. Uh, it actually starts, we can see here, FreeBSD 13.1 uh, is what's being run. Resolution is 1280 by 800, and it's running on the on my desktop machine here, so it's a Ryzen 7 5700. So that's all fine. Uh, as we can see, the network is working perfectly fine. So the drivers for VataUNet are definitely uh, present. I don't know much else about BSD, so I'm not really able to poke around to see exactly what kind of drivers may be, may be loaded and how things work. Uh, like there's some familiarity with Linux, obviously slash proc exists, but it's only the processes. Uh, and then my settings that BSD uses a different kind of kernel API to, to manage devices and kernel config and stuff. But yeah, for anyone who wanted to get BSD running on LexD, then that's the way to do it. That seems to be working okay. This, In this case, you do get a GNOME-based kind of environment, which seems to work pretty much as you would expect. Uh, but you could use the exact same instructions to run something like FreeNAS or PFSense or any of the other BSD-based um, systems. Or you can also uh, just run just straight up command line FreeBSD or uh, OpenBSD. I hope this was useful to you. Um, this is definitely a bit different from what we've done in, in the few recent videos, uh, but we had a few, quite a few requests about running uh, BSD on NextD, and some folks didn't figure out how to get that working on our forum a few weeks ago. So I figured I would show you all um, how to do it. So if you've got any questions uh, about this, you can leave them down below, uh, or you can go on our community forum and ask them there. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.